you on periodic trends. So we have a lot of things that are going on in the periodic table and lots of stuff that we can use. We increase from left to right with our atomic number. And with that, the atomic number is equivalent to our mass number. And so if we're moving from left to right across a period, we know that we are increasing. Okay, so we're increasing our protons. And when we increase our protons, we're increasing our nuclear charge. Now with that, it's important to notice that in that same period that we're in, the electron distance say, stays the same for that particular period. So the effective nuclear charge actually increases as well from left to right. So electron distance is the same across the period. Keep that in mind. Now, that's not the same as we move down a group. So as we're moving down a group, we know that um, we are increasing um, distance electrons are from the nucleus. Okay, so we have those principal quantum numbers um, or energy levels. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so these are going to be principal quantum numbers. the fancy term for it, but I think of them more along the, the lines of energy levels. Okay. So that's a little bit of background as we kind of go through the rest of this. I want you to kind of keep those trends in mind of what's happening between distance and nuclear charge. So we've already taken a look at electrostatic attraction a little bit with Coulomb's law. And we know that opposite charges attract and same charges repel. And if we have a greater force of attraction or repulsion, if there's either a greater amount of charge or closer proximity of the charged entities. And so when we go back and we think about what's going on with the periodic table in conjunction with the charge amounts versus charge proximity, that's where kind of all of these different trends are originating from, is the interactions. Now it becomes a little more problematic because we have lots of protons and, and electrons that are going to be interacting. So let's talk about ionization energy first, which is the energy to remove an electron from a gaseous atom or ion. And so with ionization energy, um, we are going to have this overall trend that says that ionization energy is going to increase. So my arrows represent increase from the bottom to the top, okay, and then from the left side to the right side across a period. So bottom to top for a group and then left to right. And so we're increasing ionization energy. And so that means that over in this corner, we should have the greatest. And then down in this corner, we should have the least. Okay, so that's the overall trend. Now something interesting happens here that we see a couple different odd um, or things that, that go against that in a couple places. So one of them is if you're moving from the 2A column to the 3A column, okay, so exceptions, okay, so when you go from 2A to 3A, um, we actually see that there is a slight reduction um, so it lowers the ionization energy just a little bit, and it's because um, that S2 
um, those two electrons in the S is going to shield or block some of the nuclear charge access to that first P, um, the P1. So shield P1 electrons. Okay. So that's that first exception. The other exception that we see is between the 5A and the 6A position. So for example, between nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, so from the 5A to 6A, we see a slight decrease in ionization energy as we move that direction. And this one is because um, the we end up with an ele extra electron that double occupies because double, maybe I should say the first, oops, first double occupied P orbital. causes extra electron repulsion. So anytime you have a little more electron repulsion, you have a little bit less ionization energy there. Dark trend is on electron affinity. And that's the energy change due to adding an electron to a gaseous atom. So this is kind of the opposite of what we were just looking at with ionization energy. Um, ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron. That's a positive value. This is actually a negative value. We actually release energy if there is um, an electron being added. So just in case you see those numbers and they don't make sense. Our overall trend on this is that we're going to increase that electron affinity from left to right across the period. Okay, so I always point my arrows in increasing order. Now we have our exceptions here as well. So the first exception that we have is going to be our noble gases. Okay, so exceptions. So our noble gas Um, with the exception of helium, of course, which is an S2, but they are going from a P6, and then if they're going to be ionized, if they're going to add an ion, um, that would take them to an S1. And so it wouldn't really do that because um, that P6 is going to shield. So to bounce all the way up to this, that doesn't really happen, okay? So their value is actually going to be zero, we would say this doesn't really occur, okay? So that's not going to happen. The next exception that we see is going to be, grab a different color here, um, beryllium um, or the 2A column. So in everything in the 2A column, what happens is those are in the S2 position, okay? So these are going to be our alkaline earth metals, and so they are going from an S2. In order to actually add another ion, we would end up in a P1, and so to jump up to that next energy level, that also is not something that we see happen, okay? Um, and then the last one is going to be, we'll grab this color here, we'll grab some red. The five A's. So everything that's in the five A's, okay, so five A or the nitrogen group, okay, they're going from a P3 to a P4. And remember, when they try to doubly occupy it, so this one here is going to be doubly occupied. That's also something that's fairly
really unlikely to happen and so we see those values about zero so those three areas are areas that we do not see electron infinity increasing um, as we move across but the general trend is for the rest of them they're increasing as they move from left to right periodic trend that we're going to talk about in this video is going to be atomic radius and so atomic radius is going to increase from right to left so I don't like the way they draw their arrows, I like to go the other way. And then from top to bottom. Okay. And so I like this picture because it kind of shows the relative sizes of things. Remember that hydrogen um, is going to be also very small in comparison with helium. And so when we're looking at this, we want to kind of think about what's happening um, with our period versus our group. So with our period, we are going to um, increase right to left because we are actually increasing the nuclear charge from left to right, okay? So we're increasing nuclear charge from left to right, causing um, greater attraction or attractive force and smaller atoms. Um, and all the way along that, we are not increasing our distance away from the nucleus. And so that's why the governing factor is going to be that nuclear charge. Okay. As we're moving down a group, even though we're increasing our nuclear charge, we're actually um, also increasing the distance away. And so as we move down... Okay, so let me see if I can do this here, down a group. Um, we are going to increase top to bottom because we are increasing the distance distance, the electrons are away from the nucleus, which is going to decrease okay, the attractive force. and we get larger atoms. And those core electrons that are underneath are actually shielding as well, and so that's kind of part of what's pushing that out further. And so that trend is really governed by the distance that the electrons are away. And so that's something to go back and take a look at in accordance with Coulomb's law, and we see that that follows along with that trend. We'll take a look at a few more trends when we look at some bonding things as well and um, valence electrons in the next video.